So I'll get right to the point. I think a good way to understand the schizophrenic experience is to go to the psychiatrists and the psychological theories, terminology and definitions. I think that is quite a useful starting point into a exploration of what's going on inside a schizophrenic mind. Uh, schizophrenia is, can be termed as a chronic form of psychosis. Chronic meaning it's long-lasting, it's persistent, and psychosis is something that three out of a hundred or something people will probably experience in a lifetime. And schizophrenia accounts for about one in a hundred of people. So there are more psychotic disorders than there is just schizophrenia psychosis. But that's one thing uh, to know about psychosis, that it's uh, something that's not just schizophrenic, but schizophrenia can be thought of as a form of psychosis. And a working definition of psychosis could be that an individual is experiencing a breach in their psychological connection to reality, to shared reality, to relevant realities. It's a drastic disconnect from what is influential and meaningful to the actual environment and situation you are in. That's a working definition and an example is a schizophrenic that's having a series of hallucinations and can't tell which is an actual event and which is a, a mentally induced event, a mentally internal event. And not knowing the difference between reality and not reality is, uh, can be thought of as a drastic disconnect from relevant realities, the realities that are actual, like uh, um, so what it's like for the schizophrenic himself, I'm a schizophrenic, um, what it's like is being disconnected. Um, there might be times when my mind is racing along, it's doing a lot of wordy stuff, playing with the words, playing with meanings, playing with perceptions and making up all sorts of ideas which half and half are delusions, half and half are just weird connections, weird thoughts. A delusion is basically a belief, it's usually a persistent belief that um, is just can't be validated and it uh, ha can actually be invalidated in a general sense. Um, that just means that when I thought that the people I was talking to or walking by on the street weren't people but were sort of just um, shells for a weird galactic consciousness or aliens or some weird other dimensional stuff that was basically delusional. There might be some legitimacy in the new age and all that about channelers and telepathy and all this stuff. Mysticism and spiritual experiences aside, I think it's still possible to be very delusional about these experiences. Whether there is any reality or some reality or lots of reality to the experiences, whatever happens in the mind can also be really incredibly misconstrued and misinterpreted. And a schizophrenic is often right in the middle of it. It's confusing most to the schizophrenic. 
knock to the others that are trying to understand and interpret the schizophrenic. They might be shocked and and confused to a degree. To a, they might be alarmed. They might be they might have their thoughts provoked in radical or unpredictable ways. But the schizophrenic himself or herself has all that stress, all that confusion, all that perplexed um, struggle with the ideas, with trying to rationalize them, with trying to fit them in with within their own mind, within their own experience of the tension of those conflicting ideas, of those conflicting experiences, a voice that says this, a hallucination of an object that tells you something else, a glimmers of feeling that, that just spur you on and your mind races and it just goes away and but often, for many schizophrenics, there is also a perplexing motivation to try to deal with the ideas, to try to sort it out, to try to make sense of it all. Because it's often very meaningful. That's why the common, like, stereotypical symptom of a schizophrenic is to hear God in the radio, to hear songs is very much about themselves, to read books and just go for a walk and hear the birds and think that there's just one single being in communication with them somehow. Like, that's my personal experience. Everyone Every schizophrenic I've met has their own different kind of paranoia, their own different per perplexed belief systems and ideas about what's going on, what situation they're in, what is out to get them, or whatever is going on. <sighs> yeah. What else is it like? Maybe if you have any questions, leave them in the comments and uh, I can talk about something specific that you're curious about, if you're curious about it. <laughs> um, when it comes to the positive sides of what it's like to be a schizophrenic, um, I'd have to say that the quickness of the mind's the mind making associations between concepts between disparate fields of thought and fields of of situation of different systems of different cultural mannerisms different things different um there's the creativity that is ascribed to many kind, many people, different different types of mental illnesses or psychological um, deviances, um, and the creativity that happens in a schizophrenic mind is sort of a rush of the subconscious. It just sort of provides conscious materials for the mind to speak, to write, to draw, to even the subconscious has got to be what's responsible for the hallucinations and the voices and whatnot. It's not a conscious deliberation. It's the subconscious and unconscious processes of the brain, patterns of the brain just reiterating themselves out as focus and motivation changes to an individual's life. Um, when it comes to uh, causes for the negative aspects of schizophrenia, I think there, the doctors talk about genetic reasons, environmental reasons, chemical reasons, uh, um, 
migrancy reasons, people that are um, immigrants in a new land and people who are kind of out culturally um, have a more, a slightly higher incidence of schizophrenia. Doctors talk about drugs, marijuana is inducing schizophrenia. And all these things, I think, are contributors. But I'm with Gregory Bateson, a social anthropologist, British social anthropologist, who had uh, several theories of schizophrenia. And he thought that the schizophrenic himself or herself was sort of the epicenter of a schizophrenic genic. Uh, social environment, a, a situation where one individual kind of took the brunt of uh, social and physiological and genetic, all these things uh, the, that the schizophrenic sort of blew up and would go psychotic because of the forces that existed. Other thinkers in the field of, top, of schizophrenia um, have talked about how the shaman or the the uh, the mystic of traditions, historical traditions that go back thousands and thousands of years, could be people that in contemporary Western culture are deemed schizophrenic. That we might have been the shamans, the healers, these kind of people that were kind of like the ones that saw far, saw big. And I think what's going on is that like one out of a hundred are schizophrenic or so, and one out of a hundred or so are shamans. In those cultures, it's not necessarily like everyone's a shaman. There's a lot of people that aren't. And some shamans have lots of weird experiences and they don't do any of the plant drugs that the other shamans do. They just have the experiences anyway. And So it comes down, it seems more to ecological integration, even if it's not just biological ecology, but social ecology, psychological ecology, the internal workings of the mind, the internal connections, the working connections of the mind to the others, to the world. And when the environment and society integrates it better and understands it better, people with certain dispositions, I don't think would uh, necessarily have, have um, dangerous or unhealthy schizophrenic symptoms. I think we would have like, I, I was first hospitalized in 2002, again in 2006, and now in 2010, I'm doing relatively well. I still have quickness of associations. I still play with words. I still have some audible, auditory glimmers of hallucinations every now and then. Often it's music that I'm hearing since making music as a, for a hobby, for a good distraction from the wordiness that I had before. Um, now I hear music rather than words and sentences and delusions, you know? I'm doing better than I was. And now the things that seem to be the negative and harmful and rough symptoms of the past are now sort of adaptable features of myself that help me be what I am, who I am the person I am. I am a fast thinker. I am a quick minded darting from topic to topic and somehow managing to keep a flow going somehow. Like that's taken years. I used to get distracted and run all over the all over the place. But I'm getting much better. As time goes on I'm integrating myself into the way that feels best to be. Anyway, I'm running to my 15 minute limit. Thanks YouTube for uh, letting me do 15 minute videos. That's cool. And yeah, have a good one.
feel free to ask any questions. I'm here to inform. I want to inform. Have a good one.